coming out with over 37 Mateo Spartans. And coming out with a bit of a welcome back to number 25, Emmanuel Hello and welcome to From the Rooker End, a podcast uh, all about our life following Watford Football Club outside Vicarage Road. Uh, trying to get out of the way of um, some young people playing a game of nutmegs. Um, that's our sons. My name is John. Uh, with me is Michael. If I'm trying to play a game of nutmegs. I wonder who might have inspired that particular, <laughs> that particular game. Hello. hello. Um, uh, Jason. Uh, Magic of the Cup. Good afternoon. Yes, it is. Uh, 1-1, Michael. Yeah. And I... I I think sometimes you know you probably can get pelters. You could if I if I say the word phrase, I might say. Actually, that was quite a fun game of football to watch. I think so. I think the nagging doubt as the game ticked on was that they were going to probably turn the game around, which mm. is going to be disappointing in a game that we probably should have been out of sight in. Really, I think we had enough of the play, enough of the chances against a significantly weakened Southampton side. It has to be said to put the game to bed. So there is that frustration. With hindsight, talking about it now, thinking about an extra game down there at Southampton, we could do without it, they could do without it, and Liverpool away in the next round midweek. It's kind of the whole kind of thing is sort of a bit sort of like, it just feels a little bit. But you're right, the game itself was was fun. Uh, we, we saw more of the evolution of this Watford side, which is the, I, I think is why we wanted and expected Val to go strong with this side. No one really let themselves down. We didn't learn a massive amount, apart from the fact that I think we continue to grow to love this mm. this team and this this club again. There's there's not been too many people, apart from me, moaning too much walking up Occupation slash Yellow Brick Road after the game. And I, I think you're right. I think your general um, conclusion is that was quite fun. This has been from the Rooker Inn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There was a point I was thinking about. Thinking, if we come off here and it's nothing really happens and we don't see much, it could just be nothing new. There's been not, not lots to talk about, but I think there is a few little topics that we can talk about. We aren't going for too long. Um, Jason, but sort of concluded the overall you know, feeling of the game. Young Eli said something. He said, "Would you prefer to lose away at Southampton, or would you prefer to lose away at Anfield?" Um, prefer not to lose either. Any of them. <laughs> um, yeah. I. I, I I want to go to Anfield because then it means winning another game of football yeah. and then getting into the next round of the FA Cup. Yeah. Um, and then whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Um, it, it, the most disappointing thing is that that fifth round tie, if we do get through, is, is midweek. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and I think that takes a lot away from it. It means a lot of people won't be able to go. Yeah. And yeah, and it's, it's a shame because it's having now been back in the, in the Championship for a couple of seasons and we know, even though we had a good run in the Premier League, Moments like this aren't don't come along often for Watford, so the opportunity to go to Anfield is is, is a good one. Um, so yeah, I would. Uh, I still want us to win at Southampton, and then go to Anfield and see what happens. Yeah, I mean it was definitely a moment when it was about six six minutes where the draw came out, and you could hear the the um, a little bit and the the atlas the atmosphere in the crowd sort of dropped. Got a bit cheery when we found out that those uh, friends up the M- M1 uh, drew Manchester City, but that's another thing altogether. So, right, let's go through this, the game into the, 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 the players and in terms of like maybe the positions. Um, should we go f- f- back to front or front to back? Let's go back to front. Okay, Matty Pollock, um, a well, player who's this start right at the very back. Back at the back. Now, that was really interesting because remember the last game we played here where he was you know, again not not comfortable, not 100. percent was getting pelters very quickly from the crowd when yeah. the, the littlest mistake happened. He wasn't making mistakes. In fact, there was only one solitude voice in front of me who was clearly had all the baggage and worry and everything towards Mr. Backman. That's the thing, I suppose, with him is it was a good for him to get through that game without a lot of mistakes. Yeah, and to to just to yeah to, to put a good foot forward. I think we'll get, we'll get to the end of the game and get your views on whether there was a. A mistake from him at the end that, that, that cost us. I, I couldn't really see from my vantage point in the in the Sir Elton John. I think overall, Ben Hamer's performances since he's come in have proved the limitations that Batman definitely has. Mm-hmm. I think we look more solid with Ben Hamer in. So that I think has been put to bed. And 
I probably stuck up for Dan Backman a little bit and will continue to do so. He's a Watford, he's a Watford player, he'll get my support. But Ben Hamer, at whatever he is, is a better goalkeeper than, yeah. than, than Daniel Backman. Uh, in terms of his performances today, you mentioned Chesterfield. I think he, his sort of reticence and slight mistakes turned the tide in the Chesterfield game today. I think he looked a lot more composed and dominant and made some decent saves. His distribution is, is something that people complain about. Was absolutely was absolutely fine. There was no sort of near misses, near misses there. He made uh, some good saves as the as the game went on. Had to sort of strong wrists and yada 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 all that sort of stuff. All the stuff you'd expect a keeper to do, quite frankly. But all the stuff that has often been problematic for him, and especially knowing that he's not getting games week in week out, knowing that he's playing for his place, knowing that he's playing with probably at least some of the crowd not really rooting rooting for him. Uh, so overall, you're not going to look at Dan Backman's performance and go, oh my God, that was absolutely horrific. He's going to have a terrible night's kit. Mm. But whether the goal at the end, he could have done something about it. I initially thought that it had taken a deflection because mm. he was yeah, he was yeah, late yeah, to react yeah. to it. Well, um, the, the, the picture I've seen, it was shared. I think Geordie shared it because he's, he's not at the game, is he? So he, it looked like where the ball was coming from, Backman is looking over a player in front of him. He's shifted his weight, hasn't he? He's shifted because it, it's like there's two players in front of him. I think Armstrong, I don't know where he's shaped to try and put it in the far corner or Backman's just checking mm. to see if he's going at the far corner. He's gone near post and his weight's on the wrong foot and it means, yeah, he, he, by the time he'd have transferred his weight to make the dive, you think... Yeah, he's not going to get there. I saw Jordan the Watford Analytics put on on Twitter that it was a really smart finish. So you might have, you might mm. be on something there, Jace Armstrong's gone to hit, hit it um, bottom right and has switched the last minute and tucked it bottom left. Completely done, done, Backman. And look, we'll we'll see the replays and it's gone in. It's, it's ended up in the back of the net. I'm sure he hasn't um, kept a clean sheet, so he'll be disappointed with that. Um, I think the other conversation is about whether the defenders could have done a better job of getting the ball away before that before that shot came in by that stage we had a lot of defenders on the pitch Portis had uh, had come on and we'd seeded the out if you like we we were we were basically cashed in all our chips and said right we're going to we're going to try and hold it out and and we weren't able to and it's often when the, the sort of system when the plan when the structure is um, is given up that's when these sort of chances happen so into giving up at, the, at this point because We've overburdened the defence to try and just have more bodies in that. That throws off the organisation. Yeah, potentially at, at, at very base level, too many cooks in there. You, when you when you've got a back four or a, a three and a, a, and a wide two or whatever, you know where you're supposed to be. You know what area you're covering or what man you're responsible for. And when that is there's less of a you can't. Well, there was we couldn't get the ball out. We couldn't get the ball away because there's no one up there. Um, to, to either dribble it out or play it out or hold it up so we probably had opportunities if we could watch it to, to, to get the ball away I guess on the face of it it's a sensible call to try and shore things up see the game mm, through it's yeah. not it's not a, a decision that, that Valerian Ismail is probably going to face too much criticism for but yeah d- you're d- trying to find something I think <laughs> they're oh, like, oh, it sounds like it. Bloody <laughs> boy. but um, yeah so I think I'm just vaguely disappointed really I, I don't mind admitting I was quite looking forward to putting an end to Southampton's uh, yeah. unbeaten run yeah. it would have been quite nice to, to do that so it's just one of those things yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. brought okay. on four I think they we worked out they'd made nine changes <laughs> at the start um, we looked like the better side for large swathes of the mm. game. They bought on four of their better, more yep. um, competitive, uh, more sort of consistent performers. Both the Armstrongs came on; one of them scored, and they did look they did look better after those substitutions. We were we were tired, and they did have chances to 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 win it. But yeah, look, it was overall. I think that was a, that's the Watford team we know. Yeah, and and, and I'm, I haven't got a problem with it necessarily overall. Sure. Definitely. Okay, Jason Pollock in the centre back uh, with um, Hood. Interesting because of the point of view, and we've seen rumours, and uh, I think we even had a message of someone saying, "Oh, he's he's off. He's going to going to Derby." You know, did he play today because of that? And actually, the club saying, "No, we do love you. We still do want you." But as a as a fan watching it, having not really seen him play that much football at all in a Watford, Watford at least. He didn't do anything that's going to make you worry if he's on the sheet in the future games. No, no, not at all. In fact, my first thought when I saw him on the pitch was, is he on there? 
because he's in the shop window. Mm. It's that ego, you know, let's, he, here's a man, he's available, see what he can do, see if you like him or not. And left the game thinking, well, if he plays on Wednesday, against Wednesday, I'd be happy. Mm. I, I thought he put in a good shot, and I thought that that central pairing today, I thought, was the best yeah. pairing we've seen for, for some time. I mean, it's perhaps it's quite an obvious statement because we've not kept a clean sheet for for some time have we and uh, it, it, we obviously didn't we nearly did today yeah, yeah. nearly so close sorry Michael um, but I thought they, they looked comfortable and we talk about all the changes they still had Che Adams up front still had him to deal with and yeah. I, I thought they dealt with him pretty effectively Pollock didn't do those things that sometimes we accuse Sierra Alta and, and Porto of doing in terms of too tight to players or sort of going in and herring and sort of disrupting the shape the two guys the, the, the shape was good and the challenges were good. They they did have to make some uh, vital interceptions and touches in the first half, and, and both did that. There was some, some good tackles from Hoot, some good sort of uh, interceptions from um, from Pollock at times well, as they tried to thread balls through. But it, it, generally, I thought they dealt with Southampton effectively well in that in that centre back pairing. Mm, no, it was it was quite nice. Lewis also coming back there there, Mike on the on the left hand side. With Andrews on the right, um, actually led to what Jason and I were talking about a bit about. Did you, you know that, that the, the the triad of mm. Lewis, Aspria, and Chatfortate really sort of they sort of it, it was a lovely speed going through those three. Fluidity, fluidity. There's definitely a footballer in Jamal Lewis. He's definitely comfortable with the ball. He's definitely. I'm sure his tax form says that as well, and maybe his insurance <laughs> occupation. Footballer. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I get paid by how often I state the obvious. Um, but you know, he's 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 very he is comfortable on the ball. He is athletic. I just feel like he's at 75. percent I think he, we're getting 75 percent of what we could do from him. It, both in terms of his defence and his link-up play, and, and when he gets gets forward, he's got a, a decent left foot. Was it him that had a decent crack with his right foot as well in the mm, in the first yeah, half? The ball broke to him, yeah. and he and he got a shot away. So I, I do like him. I, and you mentioned the spree. I know we're, we're we're dotting around a bit. I think he's kind of in the same bracket for me. We're not getting quite what we know we can from from him, and perhaps we're seeing why he sort of hasn't really settled settled down since he's moved from Norwich to Newcastle now here he doesn't feel like he's at the top of his game a decent player to have yeah. um, and will no doubt play an important part but I'm, he leaves me a little bit cold I, yeah. I'm just right. he, just not I think what we're seeing from a lot of these players they're probably having to give it a bit of oomph and a bit of effort and it looks good because you're thundering in and it could be actually you're thundering in because it's a covering tackle for, yeah. to make for a mistake and you don't necessarily see that from him so often. It might be that he's more in control than the others. And me being an idiot, I, I, I criticise him for it. But just not not quite sure about, about him. I think we could be getting much, much more in terms of the attacking play, the link-up play down that left side. It's not, not quite... See, I think that's maybe what I liked about today. There was link-up play. And actually the linking up always feels when you're part of a team, not just say doing an individual run and yeah, doing some great crosses that might lead to goals but the fact it felt like they were a little bit more in sync felt a bit better um, we are flicking around a bit in terms of the positions but let's flick to the other side of the pitch um, Espria and Martin had sort of switched over yep. um, so that was a bit different um, they weren't in, inverted uh, they were on their sort of right side what do we think about that pairing do you think that's again you might was that for practice or is that for options, or is it actually go? Oh no, I I think that's better. I don't know what it should mean, and I think what it did mean is is decent balls or opportunities, but decent balls into the box. They weren't always decent, um, but we did see it. I think early in the second half when the spree was getting down there, we really did see it from our view in the rookery. A couple of good balls he put in. There was one. Bayer's in, Bayer's going to score, and mm. the defender just hooked it away, isn't he, at the, at the last. Yeah. And I think there were a couple in the first half where it looked like they did just good defending from Southampton centre-back stopped the ball getting through to uh, to our attacking players. So, yeah, I think I think that was good. Um, perhaps there were times where I think there was, there was a, a moment where Martins has gone through and you think he's in here. And he hasn't quite made the right decision. He's let the defender get back to him when you think, OK, we, that's a wasted opportunity, really. Mm. If he was on the other side, he probably would have cut in and had a shot at goal. Um, but I don't think it's a ne- negative thing in, in, 
in the bigger picture and the way we played and the way we set up, I liked it. I think I'd, I'd, I'd be happy if we stuck with that again. Um, yeah, stick, keep keep them on the right side, um, <laughs> and yeah, let's see, get balls into the box because I think I mean, we're going to talk about Bayo as well. Mm, yeah, anyway, well, the next one, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, with with him and the way he was playing and sort of looking to get onto the ball, I think yeah, let's let's stick with that. Yeah, but it's important to mention that um, Aspria won the free kick for the goal mm. as well, quite early. As as is as is quite frequent in, in Watford games, we we seem to have. Uh, we seem to make hay down both flanks early on in games. We ask questions to those of uh, full-backs, whoever we're playing, and he, he beat his man, was brought down pretty clumsily. He was well beaten, and uh, Matthias Martins put in the uh, lovely free kick. Really, really good finish, mm. putting another long um, sort of overdue thing to bed, scoring, uh, scoring from a yeah. free kick. But yeah, Aspria, again, to state the obvious... He is skillful, he's talented, he's tough. He's a little bit too short. There was one cross that came over <laughs> in the second half. He didn't jump, he could, he could have jumped, but yeah. just, just skimmed like, his head. Skimmed his head yeah. and, oh! Not sure we can do much about his height, but no. he, he continues... Maybe get one of those stretchy things. <laughs> yeah, the rack. <laughs> yeah. Um, continues to sort of show that he's a decent player. Yeah. Continues to be one that slightly we just need a little bit... We just need him to catch fire. Yeah. We just need him to catch fire, but yeah... That, won the free kick that, that led directly to the goal so yeah a, a key moment in the game mm, and again it was causing lots of problems um, second half caused more problems someone in the middle Jason to sort of get on the end of it or at least be there a little bit there were, there were opportunities the balls were maybe not just going quite to the right place or the running in the wrong directions and wasn't you know there wasn't that sort of in sync that you sort of want from wingers and to centre forwards but Bio sort of showing why we had to go into the market to get Mr. Mr. Dennis, who we will get to in a minute, Michael. Do not worry. Um, and but he's just not right, and it, it it's a lot of hard work, but it, nothing's clicking, is it? There. I I I was pleased with the performance from Bayer today. I thought I I I thought we saw one of his better performances, but but perhaps that's the problem. We saw one of his better performances today, and maybe it was still a little bit short. But mm. I thought we saw. Yeah, we we saw the effort from him today. We saw we did see moments of skill, some good, good thoughtful play from him as well. He wasn't trying to do it all himself. There was a moment I think in the second half. Well, in fact, it was late, wasn't it? It was, it was when it was one all right at the end where hard, hard as, as Southampton were going more and more forward and we're retreating more and more, it makes his job harder and harder. He'd won the ball, controlled it. I think, or did he flick it first time? I can't remember, but it's a great pass of over the top for Andrews to run onto, who we haven't spoken about yet, and no. we probably need to as yeah, well, yeah. Um, for Andrews to run onto. And then he sort of turned and looking to, to make the run then in behind, and he's been clattered because Southampton, no, he's still on his game. Yeah, they, they, need, to, they need to stop him. They need to do something slightly illegal to mm-hmm. <laughs> stop Bayo then making a the run. But yeah, throughout the game, I thought he was good holding up the ball. His passing was good which hasn't always been the case when he's then sort of laid the ball off and looking for other men bringing other men into the game um, perhaps it was in the second half there were a couple of balls that came in that you think oh, if he was in the right place if he was taking a gamble to get on the end of it maybe he'd sort of drop back when he wanted we wanted him to gamble but but generally I thought it was a decent enough performance from him today I think we saw, we saw his limitations I think Jason's right I think I liked his energy I liked his work rate his like, his touch was was good. He his discipline was good. Overall, his positioning w- was good, and he added to the to the performance. What I think we saw was lacking is just that instinctive striker's ability to sniff out where to be. I think if if that was another team creating those chances and they had a, a better striker, they'd have probably had two or three today. Mm. Just because it's sort of. The reaction to if the ball comes loose, a good striker is there. You well, need... he, he did come loose at one point, and he was there, and he, he, he put it wide. Yeah, 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 he did, and he had a couple of shots that were that were that were wayward off off target. So, yeah, one of his definitely one of his more mature, I guess, if you like, performances, and he, he contributed a lot. But can he sniff out a goal? I, no. I, I, I think he struggles, and there's a couple of times. And again, I talk about it. Our wide play is, is quite good. We often get the beating of the man, get the balls into the box, and you'd expect this is very, very basic and, and reductive. You'd expect your number nine to be a, a random penalty mm. spot. Yeah. If the if the if the strike if the your, your wingers are out wide, they've got the run of the man. As a striker, get yourself 
on the penalty spot. Here's one for for Dave and cliches in and around the, pen, <laughs> the, 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 the penalty box. So be be ready and alert. And all too often that happens, and then your man isn't there. Your target man isn't where you need him to be. And I think. I don't know why that is. That could be more by design. And I asked a question now, what's that group? Is that something that we're... Are we looking to arrive late? Are we looking to pick up second balls? What is it? But for me, you get, you've got talent wide who can beat their defenders. They're going to put uh, balls in. You want your striker in the middle so he can latch on and, and score. And I think he all too often, he's not in the right place for me. But I make Jason absolutely correct. I, I liked his application today but I think we also saw his uh, saw his limitations which was a shame because otherwise the game could have been put out of sight really before we get to Mr Dennis see you great see game Alter. nice game yeah. and Andrews as well two you know players in see we said Pollock looked good because the first time we've seen him but those are two players that have had lots of opportunities and developed because of those opportunities yeah I think see you in terms of disrupting Southampton in uh, sort of just in front of the defence, protecting the defence, probably suits his game more than playing centre back. You know, I was bang on about him <laughs> being too tight to his man. He, that, that, he did that well in uh, sort of that CDM position today. He, he, disrupted, he disrupted the Southampton <laughs> fans as well. They were booing him because they thought he was Wesley Gert <laughs> uh, for half of the first half, which oh, I thought was quite dear, funny. That was, uh, that was, uh, fantastic. Um, Andrews, I think we need to give a lot of credit for another good performance from him today. And at the end, when legs were tiring, he was still working hard. He still seemed to have that energy. Um, I think uh, Colin was saying to me um, in the second half, we, we're not going to be able to hold on to him for, for much no. longer. He, no. He's looking good. He's looking good. And he popped, he popped up right at the end there yeah. with the, the ball on the, on the right-hand side and perhaps could have squared it. But I think it's a measure of his continuing confidence that he took it on. He thought, right, I'm going to have a go. It was the wrong decision. But I've been critical this year of Watford, Watford players not, not taking on an opportunity, not taking a chance. He's gone for it, and I think that speaks to the type of footballer he is. And He is no shrinking violet, and there's a reason for that. He's supremely talented, supremely quick. I think I saw somewhere quoted, I don't know if it's he, him saying he was faster than his dad, but certainly someone said he's faster than his dad, and his dad was bloody rapid. Yeah. <laughs> so for that, for that to be sort of confirmed by someone, whether it was him, whoever it was in the camp, that tells you a lot. Mm. He, and, and Colin and Jason are, are right. He is, I was talking to someone before the game about who, who's looking good for Watford, and luckily he, ha he hadn't really heard about Ryan Andrews, and I was waxing lyrical about him saying how good he was. And he hadn't heard of him, which I think is a good sign mm. for us. Yeah. For a couple of years at least. Yeah. Um, because I think he can go he can go all the way to the top. But yeah, love seeing him uh, as part of that back four. And, and I guess if you if you run it back, John, so Jamal Lewis is sort of not eye catching, but fine. Pollock sort of doing a really where it's playing on a Sunday. That's a Sunday <laughs> centre back uh, performance, <laughs> which is which is good. You want that meat and potatoes, sort it out, get the ball out when you can, into your tackle, committed. Don't give the don't give the um, the attacker a chance. It was great from him. Hurt, I think, enjoyed playing against him, spraying balls left and right. Even with his right foot today, I thought Wes was was good. And then Andrews on the right with with Sear Outer in front. It was it was a really good really good setup, I think. And with a, with an eye on the most important the more important fixture, which which is Wednesday on Wednesday, going away with that sort of having put in a performance like that in terms of. I've been so critical about how easy it is to score against us, and it's a bit of a, an ongoing joke that we can't keep a, a clean sheet. So for, to to look relatively solid, albeit against a vastly, vastly, vastly changed Southampton side, I think that should give them that should give them confidence and give Val confidence. Hmm. Should we get on to Mr. Dennis? You would have heard the, his entrance uh, at the beginning of the podcast. Um, it was rapturous. He got a big round of applause when he was doing uh, In the Corner Where We Are, um, the rookery for you know being back and welcome back, all the rest of it. Pretty much the performance I thought we were going to get, Mike. I think, I thought, I think, I think before, if, before we talk about the pitch, what happened mm. on the pitch, we need to talk about the stage managed warm up. <laughs> because we sent out the first group of subs to warm up nice little ripple of applause yeah. then the next three came out nice little ripple of applause then uh, there was sort of the, the precursor which was King Ken coming back from injury yeah. he got to warm up on his own oh yeah, yeah here comes King Ken <laughs> and then the main event here comes Emmanuel Dennis warming up <laughs> love it it was uh, yeah it was, it was a big round of applause and a very good moment even on the sidelines 
exactly the sort of performance we expect from man who hasn't played a lot of football in yeah. a very long time. Um, really, that moment in the press like this week where you, it said, uh, you know, he's three, four weeks away, Valerian said, and I wasn't quite sure about that. And I go, yeah, I can see that yeah. now. The fitness wasn't quite there. You know, a bit of a run in him at one point, but it wasn't a huge amount. Firstly, that, but also that whole the thing we've been talking about with Bio and being a centre forward who's going to be poaching, that's a long way off, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it sounds like Valerian Ismail is planning on playing him out wide, which is fine because he can be out wide and you can score goals from that, especially if you've... We saw how skillful Emmanuel Dennis can be and how impactful he can be. So, yeah, a, a, a sensible decision to give him 15 minutes today. If you were a, a betting man, you'd have said that's exactly what would, would happen. He'd get chucked on um, and see what he can do just to get some of that match sharpness back in your legs. I, I'm not sure how, he, how long he has been at the training ground. Some people suggesting it could have been as much as a week he's been, he's been training, but evidently not, not sharp. He looked rusty. He tried a little sort of trick on the edge <laughs> oh, of the he, he absolutely does. <laughs> ah, not there, Dennis. Oh, not yeah. there. Which he's, which he's going to do. He's going to do fit it. Or, fit, or, fit or otherwise, we, we, need to get, we need to get used to that. Now, our but, friend uh, um, Dave uh, Mullins, he, uh, just, he came over a chat to us after the game, and he said, when he saw that, John, I thought of you. <laughs> I thought you'd be going, ah, yeah, I did a little bit. But there's, a, there's a bit of an intangible with, um, with Emmanuel Dennis, and... What I love in games like this is when Southampton sniffed blood. They thought they could win it and they got they, their fans got noisy. Then there was a little passage of play where the whole uh, Vicarage Road got up behind Watford because I can't quite sure what, I can't quite remember what ignited it, whether it was a good tackle or a break or something. And it just the place just erupted for, for a couple of minutes. Really, really noisy. And it, sometimes it just happens. You can't plan that. You can't make a crowd be noisy. But what helps do that is flair players are, you know, bums off seats players. And regardless of, of your opinion of him, that's exactly what he is. And you cannot deny the excitement amongst the supporters when someone like Emmanuel Dennis comes on. The best of him is a couple of weeks away. I have absolutely no doubt about that. But just getting 15 minutes into his legs mm. against a decent side who were at that stage in the ascendancy with, with, with some of their better players on the pitch, it can, only, it can only be helpful. It would have been disappointing had that little chilly shelling around on the edge of his own <laughs> box led to, led to yeah. a goal that wouldn't have been the, the comeback but it didn't um, he, he's again we talked about Ryan Andrews being happiest going forward he's going to be uh, he's going to take it to the opposition that's what he's going to do that's what he's in the side to do he is his happiest when he's causing chaos and I think we sometimes we, we're a little bit too measured and I think if there's one thing that you can call Emmanuel Dennis, it isn't measured. <laughs> uh, so no, it's all really still can't. still pretty surreal yeah. to see him back in a, yeah. uh, in a in a Watford chair. Although the amount of sort of social media we've seen this week, it feels like he's been back for about six months. <laughs> <laughs> sort, of, sort of seeing him in a Watford shirt didn't really have the same impact as we've seen him in a Watford shirt for about, about six billion times this do, week. Do you know, there's always that thing when players sign, and often they're like, "Well, oh, there's a new kit." And um, my mate Tim, who does the rugby podcast, he, they're a massive thing about it. So when you have your, your the new kit picture taken and you have you got the full on you look really good but if you're wearing your trainers especially white trainers it ruins the entire <laughs> aesthetic. aesthetic but his so, certain bits for his you know video the slow-mo the moving the spinning around it was great because you couldn't see his his tracksuit bottoms he was wearing below he's like oh don't show the tracksuit bottoms that makes him look like he's half half a player yeah that was a, a little silly moment for me this week with the social media content um, but he's one player that's come in uh, Dennis, is he going to you know, fit the problems that we have up front? Who knows? We will find out. Pollock, you know, again, we talked about him possibly going. The need for another centre-back. I'm not saying he's, a, he's the answer or, or anything that we would be 100% happy with, but we're happier, at least, after seeing today's performance. We light in terms of right-back, just because of the number of people and, and fitness. We've got three days of the window left, Michael. Are we going to see much? I think Valerian and Ismail has hinted that any any uh, recruits are going to be defensive-minded ones, and I think we probably do need. Um, I thought J James Morris when he came on actually did well. He, he put in a really really important interception. I think either from a corner or across. I, I don't think James Morris ever lets us uh, lets us down. But with a, a mind towards. Jamal Lewis, for me, not being quite there. Do we need something on that left-hand side, a little bit of 
bulking up there, something else. If if Pollock is going to go, and it's a valid question, I think, after today's performance, the question for me is he hasn't had a sniff before. Mm. He's had one today against a week in Southampton and has looked OK. Is that going to be enough for Valeri and Ishmael to say, all right, I'm going to sign off and having Portois, uh, him and uh, Hurt and Sierra Alta as his options at, at centre-back? It remains to be seen. It's, I, I think the whole market is so flat. Mm. I think the, the ins and outs at, in, throughout, the, not just in, in England, but as far as I can tell, Europe, have just, it's, just, it's just been so flat. I don't, Non-existent. Yeah, I don't think there's much money available. And I think Valerian Ismail will be very, very tough on his criteria in terms of who comes in. Because the reason we like this side, the reason we're enjoying it, even though we're, I think that's only one win in six now for Watford, but you wouldn't say that we're downbeat despite that that's not a great run of form we're not losing many but we're not winning many but we like them because they're together and they're getting stuck in and that, again that sounds reductive and, and basic but you can see they stand tall when they're wearing that Watford shirt and they play for us as supporters and it's something we can get behind and that hasn't happened by accident and so I think Val will have some pretty high bars and criteria to be met the honest answer John I've waffled for two minutes I don't know mm-hmm. he said defensive that would make sense to me because we haven't found the, the the right key to the right combination to keeping any anything approaching a clean sheet really. So that would that would make sense. Um, and I, over to them to see see what happens. So with what we've got so far, Jason, there's always that thing of the football fan. Your the aim, what you're aiming for in the season, what you expect from the season. We are close to the playoffs. Do you feel that's still should be an aim or do you think actually from what you've seen we should be hinting at the playoffs as an expectation um, I'd say aim I, I, I think that's what you need to you need to aim high don't you there's no point just saying well we're not going to get to the playoffs let's not, not bother I don't think we'll get to the playoffs mm-hmm. but, but there's, yeah there's no reason why we shouldn't aim there and um, like we say with that, that likeable squad that, that, spirit, that squad that's got a bit of spirit about there if Dennis does come good and brings that extra spark. He could be that sort of that spark of creativity, but then everything else has got to stay as well mm. as it has been. He kind of feels like we sort of started slowly, we sort of built on it, and have we now peaked with the rest of the team? Are, are, are they sort of are they up there playing at their best now? And mm. we've got to keep that going, so they can't let that slack and think that just bringing in. A bit of a bit of flash, Harry. That's probably a bit unfair on Dennis, but a bit of yeah, bringing in someone who who can make something happen, perhaps be excite the crowd, excite things. Doesn't mean that they can then sort of slack off, and yeah. it will happen. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We, they've had to work hard to get to this well, point. Yeah, like last year where we were sort of not uh, dependent on, but the the flashness mm. of Pedro. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And we so we we're in the mix. We, we're close to it. So we're there. We've just got to keep working hard to keep it going, and because if we, if for a minute we think, ah, oh, that's it, yeah, we've we've achieved what we need to achieve, and we're we're doing better than what perhaps we thought we would do, then it just turns south very very quickly. But that's a big and more important thing, I suppose, for next season as well, Mike. You don't want to see you know, end the season on a whimper because you might start the following one on a whimper. So, what do we think about you, Michael, in your thoughts for this rest of the season? Expectations changed? Aims? Anything different? I'd, my aim, I think, would be to, ch- to be challenging for the playoffs. I think my, I think my, if you put a gun to my head, I think the squad is too thin as it stands. Obviously, the transfer window hasn't ended yet. I think the yeah, squad. Yeah, but we're is... not. But imagine we're having a conversation where as everything we've said is we're not going to see anything drastic happening, are we? No. So we're not going to see steps up. We're just going to see more bodies. That's not necessarily going to change you that much, is it? We could we could see Eli and Daniel signed up for Watford because I think for the last 20 minutes they've been playing with uh, junior Chak for Tadze one and yeah, one and yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. So oh, well, well, they, well, Russell Martin's just walked past as well, hasn't he? So I perhaps he was having a look as and well. And Nani walked past as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, whether, I wonder whether Daniel and Eli might be having yeah. a play date round at uh, Georgie yeah, Chak for Georgie Chak for Tadze's <laughs> any time. And in that we could get an, we could get a really good insight as to, <laughs> as to what we might expect for the rest of the season. But I, I would want us to be challenging for the playoffs. I think that's a realistic. Um, a realistic um, hope for us as supporters to have something to play for. We were hopeful that we weren't going to get sucked into a relegation battle. It looks like that's going to be the case. It would be nice, as Jace uh, said, for it not to sort of fizzle out into nothing. And I think we've seen enough that this side can be competitive. It wasn't last year, it was crap. 
It was just a mess. It was less We than remember, the Michael. Time. It's still there. <laughs> and, still having nightmares. This lot have a plan to yeah. win football matches. They make hard work of it sometimes. And I think there are better teams than Watford. I think there are six better teams than Watford in the yeah. division. Okay. Um, as it stands. But if we can... If we can, if we can be in the equation, if we can be part of that, then that's that's great, and that's I think that's more than most of us would have expected, and it will get make sure make sure the, the next month, next couple of months are. We've we've said it's fun, for it to be really fun, you need to be winning matches. Yeah, and I think the next game is what a Sheffield Wednesday away, huge test away, big club, big, uh, albeit all struggling at the moment, but it's a big but, ground. But they will be fighting. Yeah, absolutely, they will be fighting. They will. Noisy, it'll be there. It's under lights. I talked earlier about the intangibles. It's one of those. It's a massive challenge. That you look at the league table, and, and if people are doing their accumulators, they might sort of have a quid on Watford. But that is a massive test, and I think that will tell us if we can carry on going away and not losing. That's massive, and that really is a sort of uh, that really is a sort of hint that we could the rest of the season could be could be fun. I don't expect it, but I do want it. And I don't think there's any reason that we shouldn't be hopeful of that of that playing out. I want them to play as well as they can. I want them to stick together. I want them to improve as a unit. I want to cut out the mistakes. Um, I want Valerian Ismail to be thinking about his substitutions. I think the last couple of weeks he's fallen into the trap of making them too soon and ceding back the um, initiative to the opposition. Let's do it. Let's go for it. There's no reason this can't be a fun fun couple of months this is a Watford side I'm enjoyed watching the crowd is reacting Vicarage Road is is buzzy it's full great crowd almost 17,000 here today obviously 4,000 4, Southampton but it, we're, we're back to a degree it's it's championship football and we're competitive this is a good good Watford side with a good good manager let's hope they can uh, carry on uh, with their upward trajectory I think we've done it Jason I think we've done that thing we like to do on the podcast where Mike can be a little bit negative at the beginning a bit down, but I think he's up. He's positive. The, the Mikey we love <laughs> is back. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Thank you, very much, thank you very much, Michael. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you, Jason. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, of course, we're back after the Cardiff game next weekend. Uh, and uh, we'll have a couple of games to talk about against teams that like to wear blue. So thank you very much for listening to From the Recruit. And come on, you all!